Okay, the trick to putting the uh, shift actuator in is in the older service manual, we'll talk about taking the shift lever here and the neutral detent position here. And then what you want to do is you want to roll it up onto the mid section between either the reverse of the forward cams, right, that it's at from, you know, the center position. If you just kind of line it up with a V through the hole in Volvo, turn it around, you're on the high side of the cam. Now we're ready to put it in. So we're going to put it back in. Shift shoe faces up, as it says in the book. So we're going to take the shift actuator and we're going to take the shift shoe. In. So the number side faces up or the thick side faces to the right as we put it in like that. So that's how we're going to install it. To put the shift actuator again, I want to make sure I'm on that high side of that cam right there. Numbered side of the shift actuator goes up. I'm going to push that into the housing without moving that. My two bolts on the top here. Got some sealer on those bolts because they do thread into aluminum and they will corrode. So I like the non hardening sealer again to be put on these bolts. So let's get a torque crunch and torque these down. Okay, so 40 inch pounds first. And then 70. All right, and that looks like that hasn't moved. I thought I bumped it for a second, but I haven't. So now we're gonna zoom out and go over the procedure of how you adjust it. We're gonna take the bolt out and on that bolt will be some shims. And these are actually washers, but they're shims. So the book tells you to take this bolt, take all the shims out, put it back in. All right, so I've taken all the shims off and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to turn the shaft, prop shafts counterclockwise. And as I turn them, I can feel that there's some tension on them from the rolling torque, but it's not excessive tension. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this screw in until I just can't turn that shaft. So as soon as that prop shaft stops, right there, I feel the prop shaft locked up. Now I can force it, so I like to use a latex glove. What I'll do is I'll back it off, right, and I can turn it counterclockwise. Keep turning at a reasonable pace, and then suddenly right there, it stops and I can't turn that shaft. That's the position that we want it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure that gap with a feeler gauge. Let's try 12. 12 goes. Let's try 13. Yes, 14. Yes, 15. Yes, 16. Ooh, just snug. Let's try 17. 17's a no-go, so it's 16 thousandths, all right? So there's a clearance of 16 thousandths here. Now what I want to do is I want to find 16 thousandths of shims. And all right, so we got 16 thousandths here. Now, on DPS, the book will tell you that uh, you're supposed to use a special tool. It's the same procedure, same kind of cone clutch. And then what you're going to do is bring it in until it stops, and I determine that. Now, I'm going to use 16 thousandths worth of shims, and that is going to be two shims. From the old 290 book, what you're going to do is you're going to take that screw back out. We're going to put some non-hardening Teflon sealer in it. All right, so we have 16 thousandths, and then the book says in older books to take and put one screw one shim in extra on top of the uh, shims that you're required. DPS says to use three shims and in uh, DPD or DPE I'm going to use one shim extra than the amount that I put in there. So I'm going to put three shims on here and I want to coat those shims with a little bit of sealing compound just so that it doesn't leak inside. All right, so we've got our sealing compound on here, got our three shims. I'm gonna 
turn that in. Hold it. All right, that's finger tight. And can I turn the prop shaft? Yes, I can turn the prop shaft. And then as it goes into gear, nope, can't turn the prop shaft. So right there. Now, when I torque this nut, obviously, it's going to go a little further in than where it is right now. I'm just tightening it with fingers. So that's kind of a show to see how that mechanism works. And I'm going to tighten this fastener too. 10 foot pounds. There we go. And that's it. Prop shaft spins free. Go ahead and check it one more time. And then when I go up on that cam, right about there, right, and there it locks up just as I'm coming off that cam. So that cam is just about where it starts to get, just coming off the cam right there is where it starts to drop in. And you still have a ways for this to come out, which drives that further into gear. Okay, and that's it. Pressure test, and I think we're done, finally. Been a long winding road on this one.